No. The, the reason for my joy, the reason for my happiness is Jesus. Amen. The reason why I can smile every morning is Jesus. Some days I don't feel good. I can smile because of Jesus. Some days I don't feel good. Some days I might not look good, Brother Don. It's hard to do look good when you're me. Some days my life may be falling apart, but I can smile because I know Jesus. Can you smile today because you know Jesus? Can you show me where your teeth at or where they used to be? Amen. Glory to God. It's a good day. Jesus is the reason for the season, every season, every season in my life. Ever be every bit of the being in me, Jesus is the reason that I can smile, I can be happy, I can be glad right where I'm at, right in the middle of the storm, on top of the hill, right in the valley. I can smile knowing that God's walking beside me and He's walking through me, in me. It's something beautiful. Do you know Jesus today? If you don't, today's a great day to give it all to Him. I got a few announcements I want to go for. Ladies meeting, dining out at Dinner Bell and Corinth. The church at 5 o'clock, April the 26th. I think that's coming on up. It, uh, I think that's next week. So ladies, get ready. Y'all, it sounds like it's going to be an eventful day. Going to go out and eat and go bowling. I can't bowl, so they didn't invite me. That's the reason why the ladies having a meeting. Amen. May the 6th, be in prayer. For the national day of prayer amen i believe life is going to change i believe that, that people's going to be said i believe we're going to come together as a nation in whole amen also may the 9th men's breakfast 7 30 in the fellowship hall and may the 22nd feed my sheep anybody that don't know what feed my sheep is sister sheree and brother anthony they, they get together and they cook meal. They cook like this huge, huge meal. And they segregate this meal into plates and they take it out and knock on doors and give food to somebody that wants it. Anybody. It ain't got to be anybody in particular. Anybody that will take it. And in that, they got an opportunity to share the love of Christ. It's something beautiful. when That's, that's hands and feet out walking, out talking. Out spreading the news. Ain't too many people turning down a meal. Amen. You got me in the shape I'm in now, not turning down a meal. Glory to God. But the goodness of God's going forth, whether you're part of it or not. But why not be part? God, if you're going to move, why not move with us? Don't move without us. Let us be part of it, God. Think about the power and that you are somebody in Christ. God wants to use you. But you got to be usable. All you got to do is show up. All you got to do is be there for God to move. All you have to do is be present. It don't get no better than that. It don't get no easier than that. A lot of us got stuff going on, I understand. I got more than the next person. When I ain't working, I'm sleeping. When I'm not sleeping, I'm working around the house. It is just a never-ending cycle. I know we all got something going on. But let us not forget in the business of our lives, hey, God might could use me today. Hey, I might, could, I might could do something to impact somebody's life. Not for me, not for me to look good, not for me to be somebody, but for Christ before. For the message of the gospel, the love that God gave me for me to give it away. That's why he gives it to us. He gave it to us freely so we could give it away freely kind of hard to do that when I'm self-centered worried about what I got going on. Amen. But I ain't preaching today. That was just a free nugget. Oh, God, with God's really doing stuff in Sunday school also, I invite everybody to come out. 9.30, I know it, it's hard to get here at 10.30. I know it is. But hey, that extra hour, you're missing a lot. You're really missing a blessing. It, uh, I, I don't guess we're, we're still in Romans 2. We're about at 25. We're going to finish that out, I hope next sunday morning we uh i was gonna finish out 17 through 29 today but we didn't get that far it's not really curriculum it, it's just a, a open bible study now sort of everybody's opinion matters so you can bring 
table. All you got to do is show up. Being present is 99% in Christ. You have to come. God will do the rest. Same way with salvation. If you'll come, he'll do the rest. Amen. If y'all will stand, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you for this day, Father. Thank you for your presence in the house, God. Thank you, Lord, for opening our eyes, God. This morning, Father, the breath that you let us borrow, Father, I thank you for it right now. Lord, and I pray, God, that there be anybody under the sound of my voice that don't know you today, Father, that give it all to you. Lord, that they give all that burden to you, Father, the weight, God, that you will lift from them. God, I pray, Lord, that you move in this service. God, open our hearts and our minds to receive this message that's been prepared for us today, Father, from the man of God. Lord, I pray, God, that you instill it in our hearts, Father. We can take it out to a lost and dying world, Father, and I ask it in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. The king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song. You are good. Good, oh, you are good, 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 good, oh, and let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails. The anchor in my race, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins. The ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins. The echo of my days, oh, he is my song. You are good, good, oh, you are good. Good, oh, you are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I ride, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. And let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song. Cause you are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh. You are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh. And let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in my waist. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days. Oh, he is my song. You are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh. Oh, 
Let me search like an unforeseen kiss in my heart turns violently inside of my chest and I don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about the way he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, he loves us. Yes, he loves us. Oh.
filled with your Holy Ghost that washed by the blood of the Lamb. And I'm free, I'm free, I'm ready. Free, my friend, and I'm free by the blood of the Lamb.
praise God. I sense and feel the presence of the Holy Ghost in this place. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. He is a strong tower and the righteous run into him and they are safe. Amen. There is a safety net. Amen. It ain't in who wants to be a millionaire. It's in Jesus. Glory to God. That's your safety net. That's your, that's your call line right there. You call up on Jesus, he'll take care of you. Man, I sense and feel the presence of the Lord in this place. Listen, and it wasn't by the strobe lights and it wasn't by the fog machine, but it was by the power of God that transforms the children of God, the men of God, and the women of God. It's God that delivers. It's God that sets through free. You don't have to have a gimmick. Amen. We've had, we, I, I'm going to be honest, we've had it here. We've had people, oh, we got to have a fog light. You can feel this room plumb full of fog and it won't change nothing but your visibility. You can put the light with the, the strobe lights and thank glory to God. Ain't we having a move of God? I think we're just in another concert. But when people's lives are transformed and people's lives are changed and people are saved and people are brought into the kingdom of God, you've had a move of God. Amen? You've had a move of God. <laughs> you've had a move of God. You've been transformed. That's the move of God. It's when it's evident in your life that there's been a change. I preach a message and I like what Brother Sean with the Holy Spirit spoke through him talking about you, you ain't no longer. You know why you ain't a, a dope addict no more? Because you ain't doing dope. There's been a, if there's no change, there's no Christ. Amen. If you used to steal and you came to court and the judge said you ain't nothing but a thief, guess what you are? You a thief, but if you ain't stealing no more, guess what you ain't? <laughs> you still thief and you still a thief. Oh, help me, Jesus. I'll come over here. Is that is that right? Glory to God. We've got messed up in the house of God, and we've got to where we just preach any old little old thing that flaps and slaps, and glory to God, get a high five and a shout. But how about preaching the truth? If you're still doing those things, that's what you are. Amen? Glory to God. You say this came straight from the Holy Ghost because I was reading this yesterday thinking, God, I can't preach that, but I can preach that. You're either in him or you're not in him. You either, hey, you're either connected to the branch or you're disconnected. And if you're disconnected, you'll be hemmed up, thrown into. There's been a few people read. It's the fact. God will deliver you and God will set you free. And then you have to walk out your life serving God. Following Christ and Paul said like this he's to follow me as I follow Christ you better watch the examples you follow there's a reason he said the blind follow the blind and they end up in the ditch they follow a tree that's still producing from the world because he told them <laughs> huh I'm a man of God yeah you a man of God all right <laughs> I was a man of God back in in, in the early 90s, too, if you are, see, there we go. We're getting back into Sunday school. Now, you can't, you, see, this is what I'm going to tell you. There's some people won't come to this church because I'm the pastor here. I've heard stuff like that. Well, I ain't coming over there. Thank God. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, we live stream. Take it off. Because they would hinder what God's trying to do. Amen. Because they're a fool looking at, hey, you remember that? I ain't remember none of that. And listen, how you live ain't going to affect my walk with God. I'm not watching you to get to heaven. I'm watching what he did. I'm following Christ. I ain't following you. Because if you are bearing bad fruit, you ain't a him. I don't like that preaching. That's the truth. That's a fact. You, you, the Bible says, I didn't say it. I don't make this stuff up. It's in the Word of God. If you spend a little time in it, you'll find it. Listen, we, we get in church and we say, Oh, they're a Christian. They're a good, godly person. They, they're a Christian. Uh, they just hadn't got rid of all that. 
Then we say, man, they they such a good Christian. It's maturity and it is grown, but this is the fact. If you've been saved for any amount of time and you are bearing bad fruit, you know what we say in church? Oh, they a good tree. And the Bible said you're a liar. The Bible said a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. So if they're bearing bad fruit, guess what they ain't? They ain't a good tree. They're a bad tree. Stay away from them and you'll get thorned. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm just, that's a, I, I, I watched Judge Jenny on Fox News before. That's just my opener. <laughs> Glory to God. Children's church being dismissed, but I'm, I'm telling you, man, God is trying to do something and God is doing something to anybody that'll hear, to anybody that'll listen, to anybody that'll follow. You follow. Glory to God. Amen. I get corrected all the time from the Holy Ghost. Amen. We are weak, but He is strong. I, I, I said, we are weak, but he is strong. And then our weakness is when his strongness shows up. Amen. I hope I can preach this like the Lord give it to me, but I'm going to share some things this morning that I hope will build your faith and help you and get you focused. And like, just, I understand more and more about pastoring. I understand more and more about Brother Larry when the Lord called me. He said, for this cause you've been called to teach and to preach the gospel. And teach was first. And I thought, I can't even read. Right? Who am I going to teach? And now I find myself, at, at the first it was just preaching, but now I find myself teaching because we got to have some substance from the Word of God that'll stick to us like peanut butter and we can live with it. Amen? We, we've got to have some some God-fearing women and men in the house of God that'll serve God and be an example. Amen? We get outside. You know, uh, we said it in Sunday school. Somebody did that people won't go to church for the hypocrites. Glory to God. I, I thought, man, why don't they just call them what they are? Why don't someone that goes out there and lives any kind of way just tell them, man, I'm just trying? That would be more like it. I, I wouldn't brand them as a hypocrite now. So praise God, I'm glad to that. I try and get that straightened up in their life, let people know. Because it hinders the world. Why do you think that when Paul took the Enoch and baptized him, he explained God to him? He didn't say, how long baptize him? And he says, man, this is a very serious thing. You're proclaiming to be something that the world needs, and they need it to be real. Amen? Praise God. Here we go. Philippians 8 9. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. You want to be able to help yourself get along through life's journey, read that constantly over and over and over. And when someone says something negative, think on the good things. Think on the pure things. Think on the good report. Think on them. Cast all that other stuff down. It won't do nothing but destroy you because it'll get you looking at something you shouldn't be looking at. Amen? These things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Paul was saying, how many of us can say that? I'm being real. I'm being serious. How many of us can say, man, I think on the good things. I think on the, I don't think on that negative. I don't think on that bad stuff, but I'm thinking on the good. How many of us can, Paul said, these things you've learned of me and you have heard. And he's telling them, he said, you do it. Think about it. How many of us can say, how I'm living is how I want you to do. How I'm living is what I want you to do. That's not about guilt and shame. It's about getting our lives lined up with the Word of God and going. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, for the next few moments, I pray God touch our hearts, our lives, our minds, our souls. God, I pray God, if there's any here that's lost, save them. God, if there's any here that needs deliverance, deliver them. God, if there's any here that's sick that need to be healed, Heal them, Father. God, that's your words. These signs will follow those that believe. The problem is doubt has creeped into the house of God. 
And Lord, glory to God, faith is going to arise and healing is going to be tough. I've seen a message, blind faith, and I'm just believing by the power and the anointing of God, things are going to happen this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Think about it this morning. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Let us know if there's going to be any praise, it's going to be to the glory of God. It's going to be for the things that God did. Now listen to this. These things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. He's Paul had given them the gospel of the cross and they had seen it work in his life. So they had the correct teaching and they had the correct example. Now listen, he said, and the God of peace shall be with you. Peace will be ours if our faith is cross and then and then it remains and it remains in the cross that gives us the peace that gives us that gives us our confidence you, you know we get and he's talking about he had given them the gospel and I had something to watch and you know that's one thing that I know that if God gave me a gift it was to see people saved and brought into the kingdom of God and we're he's working on me at is where we have to start being an example to disciple them that's where the church is failing is discipling people and bringing them up in the in moderation if I say I can't say that word I gotta watch them words but bringing them up in the Lord and teaching them about the gospel teaching them about Christ what Christ did how much he truly loves you how how much he walks with you, how much he's with you. He ain't left you, he ain't forsaken you. There's a reason you didn't go back to the things that you once went back to. It's because there's a different presence in your life. Then see the seed, which is the word of God, has got to get in there and it's got to die that you can live. It's got to die where you can live. See, it, it dies and it, and it grows inside your life. It's the seed, it's the word of God. Listen to what it says in uh, Philippians 4.13. This, this is really... The, the passage of scripture that I was at, the 12, 12 was first. Go ahead. I had 12 marked down. It says, I know both how to be abased and I know how to be abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Listen, Paul's saying, I know what it's like not to have. I know what it's like to have. You know, if you've been in the kingdom of God long enough, it's like to have and you know what it's like not to have you end up in them places so god can humble you and allow you to look back and say hey you really ain't done nothing it's god can i tell you something i ain't done nothing this morning outside of god and when i've done it i've made a mess of it because everything that we do we do in him we either in him or we're out of him there ain't no you ain't nearly partially pregnant you either pregnant or you aren't amen that's the fact of the matter you either saved or you're not saved. You either John 3 and 3 or you ain't. And if you ain't John 3 and 3, John 3, 16 don't affect you. Because the devil believes, oh, glory to God, that messed some people up because that's the only scripture they can quote. Besides Jesus' weapon, John eleven thirty five. 35. <laughs> glory to God. Yeah, we're going to teach a little bit this morning. He said, I know both how to be a base. This whole passage is about giving, receiving. It's talking about having and not having. It's talking about the church that took care of Paul no matter where he was at. Sometimes he was took care of. If you go back and study it, sometimes they were in lack, caused him to be in lack. But God took care of him and supplied all of his need according to his riches, which is in glory. In other words, he didn't just starve to death or he wouldn't be teaching. Listen, I'm going to help us. If it don't kill us, I know both how to be abased and I know how to be abound. He said, I know what it's like to rejoice when there ain't no money. That's what he was saying. And then he said, and I know how to abound. I know how to keep rejoicing when there is money. I'm going to have to come down there. I, I, I have to listen to what God said. Listen, this, this is it. You ever know some people don't praise when it's good? Some people can only worship when it's good. But when it's bad, don't you ask, what's wrong with you? The week before, 
I said, I didn't ask you to put that chair down. I thought you were going to throw it and hit someone there. You, you, you remember you had the water pistol. You was headed to hell. What, what happened to your water pistol? <laughs> the, the devil. The devil got on me. What's he doing riding with you? The Bible says you tell him to flee and he got to go in the name of Jesus. What's he doing hanging around on your back so long for? How come you didn't tell him to get off at the first stop? No way. Why you want him to ride with you till the end of the line? Man, he torments some of y'all so easy because it's easy. It's like taking candy from a baby. He knows it. He says, Lord, you ain't got to give me much time. That's not Job. Give me just a few minutes. I'll have him cursing in a moment. Give me just a minute, God. Huh? Just a second, God. I'll have him. <laughs> I have his wife, too. I have his children, too. I have, I have the whole bunch. You give me just a few minutes. That's not Job. Quiet, ain't it? Huh? Hey. Everywhere in all things. Listen to this. He said, I can do all things. Ain't that amazing? When things are, this is one of the most quoted scriptures when everything's going good. I like, I like to say, when you're going through the worst storm, you say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. When you're in your worst battle, you are saying, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. When you can't buy a coat, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. When you're loaded, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. When you're in the lowest valley, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. When you're on the highest mountain, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. There ain't no time for the rest. Either you believe it or you don't. How in the heck can we come in here one day have faith to move mountains and come in the next day and don't have the faith to scratch our butt? Glory to God. You can't say that in church. Hallelujah. Woo! Welcome to life. L-I-F-E. You ever notice the ifs right in the middle of it? You can have life if. You can have it more abundantly if. <laughs> oh, if. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Be abased or abound. Hey. Yeah, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me from whom my strength is drawn. Do you know what that means? When I'm at my weakest moment and it looks like I'm down for the count and I don't know what to do. God said, I'm humbling you, son. Get down on your face again. Get down on your knees again. Glory to God. Get down so you can reach up. I got you there for a purpose and for a reason, and then it's that time you got to say, God, I'm weak and feeble. And he says, I know. He said, but I'm strong. He said, and I live inside you. So raise up, son. You draw your strength not from you. You don't draw your strength from him. You don't draw your strength from her. You draw your strength from me. So my help comes from on high. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Some people, if their spouse don't go, they're not going. Can I give you a revelation? If you choose to bust hell wide open, I am not going with you. There will be a separation. <laughs> Whoa! Someone said, he just said separation in church. I'm talking about on death, there will be a, you know, there shouldn't be that. You got to separate state and church. Don't worry about it. On the rapture, there's going to be a separation. Woo! <laughs> I'm leaving. Glory to God. You don't dictate me. You ain't, you, you know, that's why I say people come, people go. You know what I do? Just keep serving God. People come, people go. You know what I do? Just keep serving God. They come and they go. I just keep serving God. You know, God showed me in reality with the workplace and with the church. He said, how many times folks quit the job and they just shut you down? 
Someone says, shut you down. No, you don't work now. <laughs> I didn't work much back then, but when they're gone, I do what I got to do. And in the kingdom of God, it's the same way. When someone goes, you don't just stop. If you stopped every time someone quit, there's, this wouldn't even be a church. We'd be having ball tournaments right now. Throwing bags or something. Because because it, it, don't, it don't control what God's doing. He's still God. Amen. What you got to do is you got to find them people say, man, just stomp your toe. I can't say that in church, I don't think. Someone said, if you can say it in, 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 outside, you can say it in there. I, I told them that. That's a, fact. That's a true story. But in our in, in maturity, we grow. And after we grow, we realize, no, I can't do that neither. It just happened. But I can't say what I had, what I, what I, what I would have told somebody one time at a funeral. Imagine that at all places. We're grieving. I said, if you get your panties out of wad, you can get back at church. You know what they did? They looked at me and said, you're right. Oh, I should have lied about it. If I hadn't have been such a pitiful pastor, <laughs> you'd still be there tormenting. I mean, you'd still be there. <laughs> I ain't coming back. Glory to God. It's not going to stop what God's doing. I'm going to tell you something. We're not getting a fall glamp just to keep you here. We ain't going to start flashing lights just to keep you here. Huh? Glory to God. It's the power of God that keeps you. It's the anointing that keeps you. Huh? Not my knowing that don't keep you. Huh? My miracle don't keep you. My salvation don't keep you. It keeps you. You gotta have your own relationship. God don't have no grandchildren. He only got children. You either his child or you ain't his child. There ain't no in between. You either living it or you ain't. You either a good tree or you're a bad tree. Quit standing trying to straddle a fence that ain't there. Glory to God. You draw strength from God when you're weak. Huh? Now give you the opportunity. Who's weak? Hey. See, I was going to give you a minute to see. Now the rest of you liars will pray with us in a little bit. We're all weak. We all have weaknesses. We all have things that will hit us at certain times and it causes us to be weak. You know why? If we weren't, man, we'd think, my God. It'd get to where you think you say, do you know who I am? God's up there looking around saying, hey, do y'all know who he is? I don't know. I, I thought I knew who it was, but he done got something. I didn't even know what he is. See, this is what happens is we forget that we're weak. You may not have a drug problem. You might have a drinking problem. You might not even have a gossip problem. But you got to look down your long nose at people problem. It's wrong outside there, but in here it's really right. You're in the correct place. The Bible said if you tell that one and you correct them and you draw them out of that sin, you save a soul and you hide a multitude of sins. You're helping them. You're telling them in the love of God. When you keep doing that, you're going to bust hell wide open. If. There you go. Life. L-I-F-E. It's right in the middle of it. If you keep doing that. But if you turn. If you're converted. If you get back on track. You're going to be okay. But if you keep heading in the direction you're going. You used to be a good tree, I thought. But now. I'm looking and I thought, glory to God, that tree's been withered a long time. Tree's dead. That tree is not producing fruit. And the fruit it's producing ain't life. Help me, Lord Jesus. They're looking at me funny, Lord. I need your help, Father. Listen, I wrote down the word strengthen means to empower, enable. Increase in strength, to be strong, to make strong. 
That's what that word strengthen means. It means he may see I'm weak, but he makes me strong. I'm weak, but he enables me. I'm weak, but he gives me the strength. I'm weak, but he empowers me. I'm weak, but he enables me. I'm weak, but he makes me strong. I'm weak, but he makes me stronger. I, he's my source. He's my everything. He's where I draw strength from. I realize that I can, listen, you may think you can do the things you do because you do them, but you cannot. If you do it, you're in yourself, but in him you can do anything it is God I can do all things through Christ to strengthen me not through myself not through my own ability not through my thinking not through my walk not through nothing it's Christ every time I get to think I'm doing something I fall and God says son I've carried you the whole time why are you trying to do it on your own I'll never forget when Jordan died for three days, man, I'm telling you, it was tough. And then I preached his funeral, and I got to thinking about it. I didn't really preach his funeral. I just shared some words. He preached his own funeral. That's all you all do. Yeah, I thought about it. Someone come up to him and said, and I was standing there at the front. And they said, man, I can't believe that you you did preach your son's funeral, did all that. I, I, I don't say how you held up, and I heard it immediately. Because, see, I was weak. I was worn out. I wanted to go eat somewhere. I couldn't win that day. I just couldn't. I was drained spiritually, physically, and mentally. Sister Mary, I couldn't have did nothing. And I stood there when they asked me that question, Brother Lay. And I said, I can't believe you did that. Instantly, I heard that. See, it wasn't, it wasn't an earthquake. There wasn't a hurricane. There wasn't a big storm. I heard him say, you didn't. I did. I could have. I could have walked across there and said, "Yeah, I did it," <laughs> but then I'd have been lying because the Holy Ghost doesn't hold me. You didn't. I did, and I told him. I said, "I didn't do nothing. It was all Him." God did it. God carried me. I was weak. I was destroyed. You want to know the truth? I was a shipwreck. It was over with. I was done. There was a fork in me. Can I tell you something? If it had been my ministry, it would have ended that day. That's what's wrong with a lot of people. It's my ministry. My, 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 I, me, I, my, 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 I, E, me. And God said, I didn't know you had a ministry. I thought it was me that was strengthened. I thought it was I that caught you. I thought it was me in you, the reason you do anything that you do. I thought you was connected to me. I didn't know you was a branch all by yourself. I didn't know you could grow outside of me. Ain't you something? Woo! He, he calls all heaven and says, y'all come here, y'all ain't going to believe this. Look what they doing. Amen. I wish they just went back and read just a little bit. I wish they could have looked at John because John said, I must decrease. So he will increase. Jesus said, hey, we got one <laughs> down. Oh, help me, Lord. <laughs> got him. He said, I don't know why I went. I should have waited. If I'd have just waited, she could have went. You thought I was going to say me, didn't you? <laughs> you know, if you're counting on me, you didn't make, you ain't going to make it. But if you're counting on him, you're going in. If you're counting on him, you're going in. If you're counting on something else, you're going to fall. Amen. Listen to what I'm trying to tell us this morning. I'm trying to get done. Hey, they blame Sean. He got up and spoke a little bit. I was going to be done early. Amen. So, <laughs> they sang one song too many. No, I'm just kidding. You feel led of the Lord sing all you sing ten if you want to. If the Holy Ghost is in it, I'm with him. I'm riding. Listen to what it says. John 15, 4 and 5. I got some good gospel news for you. If this is in your life, you're good. If it ain't, you need to have a reevaluation. You can't get saved this morning because I call you up here and pray with you. You only get saved if the Spirit of God draws you. You only get drawn by the Spirit to the Father. And you'll come by the Son. If you don't have a Son, you won't have the Father. That's just plain and simple. He said, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. You didn't, you didn't think I had a scripture go with what I was talking about, did you? Here it is. 
He said, the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, uh-oh, he done brought it to us now. No more can ye except ye abide in me. That's what Je Jesus said. I'd say, you know what you do? You go home. I've done it. I got some pretty trees at home. And I've looked at, out there after the storm come through. You know what the storm does? Shakes all that dead stuff off of you. I looked out there and said, man, that branch is dead laying on the ground over there. And I go out there, man, that tree was so pretty, but you know what? There's a dead limb up there. And the storm had to shake it off. Oh, help me, Jesus. So, some of y'all already feel that, huh? Listen, let me tell you something. He, abide in me and I abide in you as, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in me, the vine. It abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. You know what happens? When you cut a branch, y'all, listen, you, you believe this. Well, you cut a dead lamb off. You can take a limb that's full of fruit. fruit. You cut that lamb off and you lay it down next to the tree. Butt it up to the tree if you want to. And come back a week later. Come back next day, you can tell. But come back, the longer you stay disconnected, the deader you are getting. You have to get connected to the vine. You've been disconnected. You, you started doing things on your own and in your own. Listen, he said it. I didn't say He said, no more can ye. He said, he let them know real quick. He said, no more can ye except you abide in me. You have to abide in me. It's the only way you can get strength. It's the only way you can get nourishment as a Christian. Now, if you're another species, if you ain't saved, then glory, go draw from where you draw. I draw from the vine. I draw from Christ. I get my energy from him. I get my strength from him. I get weak, Sister Maddie. And you know what I do when I get weak and go through that storm? The things that's dead shake off of me. He said, you didn't need it no way. It's like people that come and they go. They, they look out. Now, some of them called to different. That's good. Praise God. To ministry. Every time I've been called, it's been to ministry. I, I didn't leave because my jaws were wadded. Amen. Some people leave because they're mad. Then they think, oh, help me. I'm not going to preach that. I'm going to stay in there. I'm going to get back up here. I mess around get messed up. Look what 5 says. I am the vine, ye are the branches. Ye that abide in me, and I in him. The, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. I'm going to let you know a little secret. If you're producing fruit, you're still connected. If you're not, you, you done got loosed. Someone said, I thought he'd never leave you nor forsake. He won't never leave nor forsake, but you, you got disconnected somewhere. Somewhere you got in yourself and started doing your own things. Listen, you're bearing fruit, but your fruit is bad fruit, and people can see the bad fruit. And the bad fruit ain't getting you. I'm telling you, you better get hooked back into the vine because we the branches. Listen, disconnected from that tree, from that vine, I die i wither but connected i grow i prosper i bear fruit you got no choice but to bear fruit because you're connected to the vine but you disconnect and your fruit will become bad and people will be able to tell it and what once was a good tree say it they won't receive it from me thank you jesus you heard it from a man of God. You didn't hear it from a little short fat preacher. See, see, this one I'm trying to take. You get numb. You, you get dull of hearing when it comes from me. Think, Ain't nothing I can do. I'll always bear. Yeah, you will. You'll bear some kind of fruit, you little fruit loop. You'll definitely bear some fruit, but it'll be bad fruit. And I will tell the sheep, don't eat of that tree. Stay away from it or you will surely die. Oh, it's sort of familiar, ain't it? That's what they were told in the garden. I'm just telling you now that you <laughs> that you don't come over into the boat. Be careful. Don't be nibbling on every little tree. He, he done told you, he said, you, you watch them and they'll bear fruit. You pay attention to them and you watch them. Glory to God. Not that you watch them for your benefit. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. You make sure they're following Christ. That's why the Bible said, know them that labor among you. Huh? They bearing bad fruit, and you think, well, they okay. They'll do better next week. 
Amen. Listen, I'm telling you that you got to keep focused on the things of God. And you got to follow after God. You got to stay connected. Listen to what it says in verse 7. I ain't making this stuff up. I ain't making it up at all. It's all up in the Word of God. We, we just really got to pay attention. I'm going to go over here and read it. And, and, and right there it says the believer should read that phrase over and over again. Go, go back to five. You should read it over and over again. Four and five. You should read it over and over again. Because Jesus is letting you know. Disconnected from me, you can do nothing of yourselves. That's what he said. And if we read that over and over again, realize, but we think we do something. You ever know, what, all of us, at one time or another, think we do something. And God says, that, I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm glad you did that. That's as good as what you should do. That's what I want you to do. But you ain't did nothing. You just did what I led you to do. You did what I told you to do. That's why preachers always tell you, the ones that really know about it, you know, I'm going to get in trouble. I'm live streaming. I'm about to cut this. There's a lot of ministries that don't hold up and don't do what they need to do is because it's their ministry. They ain't never learned how to turn it over to God and say, God, this is your ministry. Whatever's done is because of you, God. Amen. If I was going to do it, I'd probably hook up the strobe light. I might put that fog light in here. If I was going to do it, I'd have to create something. But when he does it, all you got to do is be a mouthpiece. He's already done it. He said, you teach people how to get in me, and I'll take them further than you can ever think about taking them. Think about that for a minute. I can't whisper like that. People on live stream can't hear me. They misunderstand. People once that served God doing the things they do on Sunday. Don't don't help me, Lord. Holy Ghost, don't take me there. They once served God in the fullness and they became Peter. They went fishing. They gone back fishing. But you hear someone talk about them. Oh, they a good person. They are a bad tree, bad, bad fruit. They disconnected somewhere. When you're connected to him, you'll follow him. You'll be where he tells you to be. I'm in trouble now. It's okay. I'm not. I'm not. Hey, if the Lord tells me to say it, I'm just going to say it. That's what we do. What we, you know, it'd be like me. See, I'm preaching, I'm teaching, I'm singing. Yeah, like y'all don't know I'm singing. And I'm over here yapping. You don't believe it? That's that brother. He came up here. He was probably thinking, man, what is that noise? He looked at me and said, that brother Dave's singing. I didn't know, I, I didn't know what that was. <laughs> Thought somebody turned the dog loose up in here. Now I'm singing, I'm worshiping. Now, if, if you see me on Sunday, I'm camping and I'm fishing and I'm hunting and I'm. Are you looking at me funny? I have to come back over here, brother Don. You you know me pretty much my whole saved life. It was shortly there, right? and and if I start now doing all them things that I did before, so you're gonna be thinking, and boy, I went back fishing. Peter, I went back fishing. If you change somewhere in the way, you've got disconnected. It's good to stay connected unless you're on the job and you grab a hold of a naked wire. Then you might want to turn loose. <laughs> but when it comes to the kingdom of God, no matter how much you get shot, no matter how much you get, you know, that's the reason they call them a pastor. You know, they got a staff. Every, every now and then they got pokey. Every now and then we got a hooky. Huh? Every now and then we got to, got to tell you the truth. Huh? You know when we tell you the truth? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Just live the truth. Be honest. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to feel. I shouldn't feel this way. It shouldn't have nothing to do with it. Some people going to get mad. I don't feel that way. I don't care how you feel. I don't care how I feel. I care what the Word of God says. I'm trying to see people saved and brought in the kingdom of God. I want to see them make it. I don't want to see them fake it. That's truth. I want to see them make it. You hear every Sunday. You hear every Wednesday. You hear every Sunday night. Now you start doing something else on them days, you backslid. I know it. You may have not figured it out. Don't you judge. I ain't judging. I'm telling you a fact. And when you see them, they say, I still love God. I'm still serving God. How many people you witness to out there? It's true. 
the devil is stealing the talents out of the churches and they're doing things that they never once dreamed they'd do when they're supposed to be in the house of God. And I'm tired of sugarcoating it. You know why you do it? You don't hurt no one's feelings, some of their family or somebody. So you'd rather not hurt their feelings and let the people go to hell. Huh? Someone said, how you know they're going to go to hell? If they don't turn, they'll burn. Jesus told Peter, he said, you go tell Peter when he you know, gets uh, turned back around, when he gets uh, converted, when he turned back around, when he gets converted and gets back in there. Gets, he, he, was, he, was in a, he, he didn't even recognize him. He recognized the other disciples. Called Peter by name. Said, tell Peter when he gets converted, when he gets turned back around, back on track. Then he can be an encourager of the bread. Then he can help somebody. Right now, he ain't going to help nobody. Huh? Come on, put a hook here. Put a worm on his hook. Come on. Yeah, we're going to go put a minner on here. Woo! So sick of it. I, I, I'm like Shania Twain. I said last week, someone said, you've been listening to that? No, but I still remember it. That don't impress me much. That's a fact. It's a fact. So, you, so you're so doing something you never dreamed you'd do on Sunday. You never dreamed you'd do on Wednesday. Oh, I'm going to quit meddling. Someone said, you ain't meddling. I'm preaching better than you think I am. Verse 7. If ye abide in me. If. There we are. Life. L-I-F-E. Well, I'm thankful I found a word I can spell. Life. If. Right in the middle of life. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. You know why some people ain't getting what they want? If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you can ask whatever you will and you it, it shall be done unto you. The reason we don't get is because we don't believe even what we ask for. And we know we ain't walking in Him. We know we're not abiding in Him. We know we're not abiding in His Word. That's why some people say, I want everyone to pray and half of them like. They don't need me praying. I don't believe I ain't abiding in him. I ain't abiding in the word. I ain't trusting in him. I'm trusting in me. I'm trusting in what I can do. And I know when I pray, nothing going to happen. And that's why I pray, because I know when I pray, something's going to happen, because it ain't me. It's him that I draw strength from. I didn't draw strength from me. I'm weak, but he's strong. Everything that happens, happens from him. Woo! How can one person have so much glory? Because he's God. Because he came and died on a cross. It's rightfully his. And it's rightfully yours because we're joint heirs with Christ. That's why he said, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, whatsoever things you ask, it shall be done unto you. Because you're in me, you're a joint heir. You can have what you ask. I got a hold of something. I got a hold of healing. I got a hold of deliverance. I got a hold of salvation. I got a hold of prosperity. I got a hold of I got a hold of his nail scarred hands. Say glory to God. You mean God? There's no limit. He said in me, nothing's impossible. He said in you, <laughs> the only thing you can devour is a piece of chicken. But in me, you can defeat the world. That's why one little bitty shepherd looked out and said, Who is that uncircumcised? Who is that speaking against the armies of the living God? Who is that? When he was just a little boy. But he knew. He said, I serve God. Oh, come on. Listen. In, in, in 2 Corinthians 3, and I'm getting ready to close. In 2 Corinthians 3, 4, and 5, it says, it, that ain't it. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 3, 4, and 5. I may not give him that. Uh-oh. Let me go to it. 
three, four, and five. Praise God. Listen to what it says. He says, And such trust have we through Christ to Godward. Now, we are significant of ourselves to think anything of ourselves. Did you, did you hear that? But our sin. Yeah, sufficiency is of God. Did, did you did you really, you know, sometimes when you feel like and you go, I can't, I, I can't preach that revival. I can't, you know why? You started, none of you started thinking that you said, I can't. Preach that, and God's like, you can't. You don't do what you do in me. If you do it, it's you doing it. Your sufficiency, if I say, now get it, is in Him. You do what you do because of Him. You say significancy because of Him. <laughs> you should have heard me try to say that before '97. So what happens is, you look that word up when you can't pronounce it good, and it said the word means content in Him, good in Him, great in Him, security in Him, worthiness in Him, ability in Him. Think about it. Now, I looked it up in Greek Hebrew for you because I knew if I really couldn't say it good, but I knew that it meant the things that I do, I do because of Him. It ain't because of me, and I got to always remember it's not. But when it's us, that's when we feel the little shame, the little guilt, or we feel that. And then we got to realize, man, it's not me, it's God. Yeah, I can't do it. No way, it's God that does it. It's God that speaks through me. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want to talk to me before 97. I've been trying to, <laughs> hey, what you got? Huh? And he changes our want tos. So listen, that word actually means. That the contentment is in him, the goodness is in him, the greatness is in him, the security is in him, the worthiness is in him, the ability to do anything is in him. So I can go do that, but I have to do it in him. It's no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. Here we go. We can all quote it, but do we believe it? That, that's the truth. If you, you would have to go back to the word that says, I draw my strength from Christ. I'm paraphrasing it now. Yeah. Hey, glory to God. I ain't going to do that to you. I'm going to go back to it. Listen, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Can you? Then why can't we do anything? Why, why how come when something's that we can't do nothing? Because we want to do it in ourselves. I can't do that. Why? Because I is in the way. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So when Christ is doing it through, and you allow him to work through, you can do anything. Anything means anything and everything. you got to do it and draw your strength from Him and say, I'm above and not beneath. I'm the head, not the tail. My strength comes from God, not from me. I'm weak in myself. I go through storms. I go through trials. I go through tribulations. The main thing, I go through them with Him. Different than a lot of folks. you got to go through it with Him. Listen, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. Sister Mary, Ephesians 3 and 16 and Ephesians 6 and 10. I'm done. I'll be just going through them real quickly. Someone said, I don't believe you. <laughs> I'm trying. I I'm really closing this time. I'm done. Listen to what it says. It says, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient. Uh, you know what he was telling him? My, my grace will make you be content. It'll make you good. It'll make you great. It'll give you security. It'll make you worthy. It'll give you an ability. It'll cover you. Don't worry about it. My grace is sufficient for you. The Lord tends to make us weak. Being that, we then depend so thereby obtaining His strength. Listen what it says. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities 
that the power of Christ may rest upon me. He's saying, because of the end result, I'd rather deal with that. Because I know the power of Christ may abide upon me. If Paul needed to, if Paul needed so humbling and painful an experience of what the carnal nature is, it is evident. Whatever weakness belittles and humilities that proud and willful nature should be regarded by the believer most worth. Why, whatever that, I, I can't say half of the words, but in other words, you go through them things to show you that you need Him. Period. Listen to what it says in verse 10. Therefore, I make, I, I, I take pleasure in infirmities. And, and that go through them things because it makes it worthwhile, keeps us focused in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I made strong. Then the strength of Christ can be inhabited through me, but only when I know I'm weak. When you realize that you're weak and you can't do it, then God will show up and work through you. God will use you. Ephesians, and this is it, I'm closing, 3.16. It says, That He would grant you, according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might by the Spirit, in the inner man. Now listen to that. He said that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. So where's your strength coming from? Inner man. I, I can tell you that a lot of times your flesh just feels like it's going to die. But the inner man says you can't quit now. The spirit of God starts whispering to say you can't quit now. Just because they stopped or they stepped, don't draw strength from them. And when we do draw strength from each other, that's why it's important to continue in the faith. Continue the race. To continue press. Because some people, they've not learned yet to put all their hope and their faith and their trust and their confidence in God. And some of them have the confidence in men and men fail. Listen to what it says in Ephesians 6 and 10. I have to go back and look. Yeah. It said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. When I get to thinking about, Brother Larry, who I am in Him, <laughs> if you see me and I'm walking a little bit like that, it's because I'm thinking about my Savior, not because I'm thinking about me. I think about, man, what He did for me. He is strong and I am weak. I'm in this place so I can look back up and say, God, I draw my strength from you. God, I tried to do some things on my own and I ended up in a, in a bad way. I failed because I, I tried to do it. I thought I could do it. And I forgot for just a moment that Outside of you, I can do nothing. That's what he said. Go go back to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 19. I don't think I read it, but I, I want to read it and close and because this is what he did. The whole passage was talking about learning to just learning to just make it. I may have not even gave it to you, but it's Ephesians. I, I think it was the Philippians. 419. I had it on my paper, but I didn't give it to you. It said, But God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by by how? By, by, by not by you. Not by your ability to work. My business ain't blessed because my ability to work. It's not blessed by the ability of my men to work. My business is blessed because I trusted God and everything that I do. And I said, God, help us to do what's right. And see, he said, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And when you get to where you trust that, nothing else may you decide, no, I, 
I'm, I'm going to make it because of Christ. I'm going to make it because of Christ. I'm not going to make it because of me. I'm not going to make it because of her. I'm not going to make it because of them. I'm not going to make it because of... I'm going to make it because of Christ Jesus. I, I, he's going to supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. He's, he's not only going to supply my needs financially, but spiritually, mentally. He's going to supply my needs for my health, for, for, my, for everything. He's not just taking care of part of it. He's taking care of all of it. I heard a message last night. I didn't listen to all of it, but I listened to part of it. Because my wife turned it on at the end of it, and I happened to be in the living room, and Jesse the Planters was on there. He said, "You want to know why I've done so good in life?" He said, "I don't understand doubt. I don't know if he has or not. That's what he said, and he's done well in the ministry." He said, "I don't understand doubt. When you talk to me about doubt, I don't understand because I don't doubt." He said, I know I can have what I asked. He said, that's why I get what I get. He said, because I know I can have it. He said, when I ask, why I disbelieve? And it comes, and I thought, glory to God, if we can get a hold of that and say, I can have anything that I ask because it ain't me, it's Him. Doubt. You can stand to your feet. I'm done. I'm through. If you stay sitting, I'm going to preach. I got more to preach. I, glory to God. I, some of you, I knew some of you jumped up quick. So let's go. I'm hungry. <laughs> glory to God. Let's pray. I'm telling you, God wants to touch your life. If you're not saved, God wants to save you. If you're not healed, God wants to heal you. If you Glory to God. If you're not delivered, God wants to deliver you. If you're the tree that once was, and now you're producing bad fruit, God wants you to produce good fruit. But He wants you to get hooked back. You can't just be a branch laying over there by yourself. You'll die. you got to get back hooked up to the vine. And Jesus is... That's why you got to abide in Him and abide in His Word. That's Sister Maddie. When you do that, that's when you can say, God, heal her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. She don't feel bad, but she feels good. From the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Glory to God. She's like Caleb. I feel stronger than I've ever felt because my strength don't come from me. It comes from God. Glory to God. You know what we got to do in 2021? We got to say, wait a minute, I can't pray for you. I got to get the strobe light. I got to get the fog light. I got to get some power here. You know the power is already here. The anointing is already here. The yoke that breaks every yoke of bondage. Did you know you can be healed if you believe and not doubt? If you're just a say, devil, I ain't having no other way. I ain't leaving until I'm healed. It reminds me one time of a woman went to church. She said, I'm going to have the Holy Ghost. She packed the bag. Her husband said, what are you doing? She said, I ain't coming home until I get the Holy Ghost. She got filled that night. As soon as I call her, she's walking up there, got filled all the way. Because God knew she wasn't, God knew she was serious. And when someone says, Man, I'm not leaving until I'm healed, you know what? God said, Hey, they're serious. They believe. Come on, sister. I was just kidding. We ain't got no strobe light, we ain't got no fogger. Power of God's already here. Oh. You you know why she's sick? I'm going to give you a little nugget. You say, brother, how you know that? The Lord showed me her last night. The reason she's under attack is because she stepped out and said, I'm going to do something. She stepped out and said, I'm going to help with the youth. I'm going to do whatever. And then all of a sudden, sickness. Well, she got to say, you know what, devil? I ain't having that. Same God that called me, same God that healed me. He's going to set me free. He's going to deliver me. And I'm going to be healed from this sickness. Because he's trying to bind her down where she won't do. He wants her to think, well, you're too sick to do. But that's the devil trying to slip in and whisper something that her ear ain't from God. God wants to use her, and God will use her. Point your hands this way if you believe. Amen. If you don't, go get a donut. Dear Heavenly Father, I need somebody to pray. Somebody knows how to pray. Someone that believes. Someone that knows that it's not us, it's God. I'm not even going to touch you. I was told not even to touch you. Glory to God, because it ain't me. No way, it's God. It's the Holy Ghost. It's God. It's the Spirit of God that does. He's healing her even as we speak. That's the body. Raise her up. Her strength ain't from her. Her strength ain't from us. Her strength is from God. She got weak so she can realize she's strong in Him. 
tell her to look up. Her help comes from on high. Father, healing virtue. Healing virtue. Healing virtue. Healing virtue. See, we scared to pray for folks. What if it don't happen? What if it does happen? <laughs> you ever thought about that? What if it don't happen? What if it does happen? Well, don't you put your hand on her. What, what if she don't believe? What if she does believe? What if she is transformed? What if her thinking becomes thinking upon God? What if she's totally delivered? What about Peter's shadow over casting folks and them totally being changed? Totally being changed. The way you think will change. The way you walk will change. Your mentality will change. You'll think upon things, whatsoever things are good. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are of a good report, think on these things. Taking Glory to God. Sin, my cross, my shame. Healing I virtue. Bless your name. Touch her you from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. See, we it, this is it. We walk through life and we don't we don't go to where someone's sick because we're afraid. What if they don't get healed? What if the power of God, you know, we think, what if the power of God don't show up? Power of God's already here. It's already showed up. You, you're going to be shocked about this, but the power of God was here before you came. Before I came. It's within us. Do you believe? Just point your hands this way. Point your hands this way. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for this leg. I pray for the ship. I pray for this back. I pray for the structure of this body. That by the stripes, back, not by doubt, not by fear, but by the word of God. We trust, we believe. I need somebody. I need somebody to pray. See, what happened is we forgot about prayer. And I ain't talking about Saturday night. I'm talking, see, we prayed already yesterday for this service today. We've already prayed over the seats. We've already believed for the anointing of God. We've already believed for healing. We've already believed for deliverance. We've already believed for salvation. Healing. Glory. Glory. Dear Heavenly Father. Healing virtue. Healing virtue. I pray that her body gets stronger as today goes on. I'm looking forward to hear the result. The good report of the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus name praise God touch her father touch her Lord <laughs> may not look like you're going to come out of that stone taking some things out of your life on purpose <laughs>